that's the thing with that phrase. It's like a, it's like a lose lose situation. It's like either you like have needs and like that makes you a high maintenance bitch or you don't have needs and then you just don't get to have satisfying relationships. <laughs> We are Julie and Kelly, and we are here to find love. In case you're new, we are relationship experts going deep on frothy shit, and we'll be analyzing Michelle Young's Bachelorette season 18, episode 5. So, um, a quick recap on the episode. There were two one-on-one -on -one dates this week and one group date. The one-on-ones were pretty straightforward. The first one was with Joe. Um, they went on a Minnesota date and hung out and did cute Minnesota things in Michelle's hometown. He got a rose. Then they did a group date, which was like a Viking themed, eat weird foods type of date. Nothing uh, I don't know who really. Does that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a producer. Yeah, a, yeah, right. I mean, it was those those group dates are always so funny because it's like boys beat each other up. Do you know which one you love now? It's like <laughs> that's how courtship so, is, guys. I know. I <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess the main plot line of that group date was just Chris S was being upset about Michelle still liking Nate. That was kind of the main thing going on in that group date. Um, and then uh, the second one-on-one -on -one date happened, which was with Nate, and they seemed to be really driving. There's a lot of good chemistry between the two of them. And then Chris S crashed the date with Nate um, to further complain to Michelle about how upset he was that she still liked Nate. Um, so she sent Chris has Chris S home. She was basically like, I make my own decisions. Like, sorry, Chris mm -hmm. S. <laughs> and <laughs> that was about it. I mean, it was a pretty straightforward episode, but the main thing that we actually wanted to talk about today for, um, this recap or for this analysis was actually Martin. So Martin brought up how did this even come up? He brought up the idea of high maintenance women, and only that in was Miami. That I think because it's only there; <laughs> in, it's nowhere else in the country. <laughs> Miami's Miami's high maintenance women. Oh my goodness! And so mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the main thing that we wanted. To, <laughs> that was kind of the main thing that we wanted to talk about. I mean, Julie, do you want to kind of kick us off on yeah. thoughts? I have thoughts. When I saw that, I was like, yeah, he just organically brought it up. Like, this was a conversation yeah. he wanted to have with Michelle. It was his worldview on women. And I just always wonder what someone means when they say they don't like someone high maintenance. Like, what does that mm. mean? Does that mm. mean you don't want to take care of them? You don't respect them? Like, certain things that they ask of you, you think it's too much for you and it's up to them to like handle their emotional needs. I liked how um, Michelle was trying to like scrape the surface of that. Phrase high maintenance itself, I mean, it is really just coded misogyny at this point because that phrase is almost never pointed at men. It's just, it's almost exclusively used to describe women, which Michelle called out to him. She is like, what makes a woman high maintenance as opposed to a man. And he was basically like, oh, well, men are never high maintenance. Men don't behave. He was basically like, he, I mean, Martin said it. He was like, we only use this phrase to talk about women. And you know, the phrase I was looking it up because I was trying to mm -hmm. understand like the history of this term. And, you know, it was popularized according to the, according to the internet, it was popularized by When Harry Met Sally, which is like that classic rom-com. And in that movie, the Harry says to Sally, like, oh, there's two types of women, high maintenance women and low maintenance women. And, you know, she was like, which one am I? And he's like, oh, you're the worst kind. You're a high maintenance woman who looks like, who thinks that she's a low maintenance woman. And so, you know, from that movie, that's kind of where that phrase became very popularly used. And the thing that I think is like really frustrating about that phrase, I mean, it, it, essentially it's just talking about, like you were saying, like, women who 
want things, right? Like it's like women who or they like, have like needs. they know what they want. Like I remember right, in that exactly. movie, she liked. I think she ordered her salad a specific way, and he got annoyed. It's like she knows what she likes and what she doesn't like. like Why is that a big deal? I know. Like, can you like? And that's the thing about it. It's like almost just like a way to shame people for like having needs or expressing their needs, or you know, it's like almost like a way to essentially encourage specifically women to ask for less in their relationships Mm -hmm. and expect less in their relationships. Um, Other eyes, oops. You know, and if they do expect more, they should know that they're being high maintenance and that makes them unreasonable. It's it's almost like a way for, it's like a great way for like a guy who like doesn't want to like meet his partner's needs to just like shift the blame and make it like, like put it back on her and make it her fault. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, like, yeah, I don't let, yeah, I ignore all your texts and I ignore all your calls, but that's your fault for like wanting me to talk to you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like a way to like kind of like shift the blame or like shift the responsibility back onto that person and just like essentially shame them for wanting anything in the first place, right? And like that's, that's the thing with that phrase. It's like a, it's like a lose lose situation. It's like either you like have needs and like that makes you a high maintenance bitch. Or you don't have needs and then you just don't get to have satisfying relationships. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like you don't get you anything know? you want, but you play into the right. facade of what he deems to be attractive. Right, exactly. It's basically asking women to like, don't ask me for anything. Just be hot and like silent, <laughs> you know, like that's kind of yes. what that phrase is asking for. And that's why it's like, it just, it's misogynistic. It's just like on its face, right? It's just, you know, mm-hmm. way to, you know tell women to stop wanting things and stop asking for things yes that type of relationship doesn't allow for any type of like spaciousness to it it's very Mm -hmm. like limited it's really sexist and i think with the whole martin and um michelle like dichotomy it kind of shows like what happens when you just meet a guy you really like him he's cute he has a great body he's a great kisser and then he like four dates in can't really hide his misogyny anymore but at that point you're kind of invested you kind of like him you've had some great dates maybe it's a fluke you can maybe dismiss it that's one reason of why she could have why she kept him and why she gave him a rose the other is like producer manipulation just to like add in someone spicy for the next few weeks but it's i just feel like martin just feels like that kind of guy like great date but he can't hide like his true perception about what he wants in a relationship and what he wants is a relationship that's very specific really defined really centers himself in his needs and he doesn't really have to like compromise on the other things that might involve his partner yeah totally totally and it's it's you know to me it feels very it's it's related to the whole like cool girl thing like from yeah gone Gone Girl. girl i think gone girl popularized that concept which is basically like you know, guys want girls who are cool girls and who, like, mm. you know, they're, like, chill. They're just one of the guys. They don't, like, have yeah. too much that they need and want. It's the same concept, right? They're basically saying, like, they want women who are hot but don't want anything, who don't ask for anything, who are hot but pliable, will do whatever I want them to do and whatever I, like, who won't ask me to, like, go out of my way to, like, do anything for them. That's what, mm. you know, that's what that's what essentially is being asked for, for when they talk about they want a low-maintenance person, right? And... Um, you know, you brought this up too. It's like Martin, even the way he was using that phrase was to like juxtapose like, oh, you're not like those types of girls. Like you're not, yeah, you're not like the other girls. And like, even that, that whole like dynamic, Mm -hmm. it's like trying to pit women against each other or trying to prove that like, oh, well, like most women fucking suck, but you're awesome. It's like, bitch, no, women are awesome. Women are great. I want to be like the other girls. Like, I want to be like be, all of them. <laughs> I want to be like, girls are so cool and amazing and incredible and strong and like mm-hmm. interesting and brave and, you know, set boundaries. I want to be exactly like the other girls. Like, don't try to pit me against them. And that's the thing. It's like, by saying that, like by saying things like that, like you're different. Like what they're essentially saying is like, I hate most women. Most women are not up to my standards, but you're the special one because you are. And it's like that's not a compliment. What you're just all you're telling me is that you're a misogynist 
and <laughs> you you are currently not including me in your hatred for women because you want to bone me or something. That's all you're saying. <laughs> like, so it's it's not a compliment. All it just tells it's me is not. how you really. All it tells me is how you really feel about women. So, yeah, it was, like, to your point, just, like, red flag after red flag with Margaret. Yeah. I was very surprised that she kept him. I I hope it's producer manipulation because a lot of things showed up in that episode where I was like, okay, the way that Martin moves is showing a lot about himself. Like, first is the misogynistic comments. Second, it's the fact that he has friends in the house like jamie the ceo that was sent home and then chris s the entire episode he was like pumping up the man he was like uplifting him he was like not telling him that he wasn't right or wrong he was being there for him which is completely fine you know like we all need friendships in our life we need someone to like talk Mm -hmm. about certain things with and it's great in the house they found that connection but it does show a theme okay you kind of align with a lot of problematic members in the house you are the company you keep you can tell a lot about the person that you're vibing with with the kind of people they have in their life like their values and what they find interesting you know you're gonna want to be around people who you find similar to you or who you agree with and you find it minimal and it's like if martin has only been friends in the house with people who are kind of been jerks <laughs> like you know it's just kind of like okay we can kind of intuit that even if martin maybe martin is not himself a jerk although the sexist comments to me it's like all right like that's already like it's already he's basically a villain at that point but even that aside it's like if you keep company with people who are jerks you're essentially you know approving of those people's actions right and you're approving you're you're tacitly saying that you think it's okay for people to behave that way and so you know being friends with a jerk is to me the same as being the jerk you know it's just you're yeah so i i i agree i hope it was producer manipulation that's i hope so like michelle it just doesn't make she's been so decisive and so like yeah quick at just sussing out a lot of these characters and isn't, yeah. I feel like he's really the only one left that is a, is a question mark. All of the other guys, it makes sense why they're still there. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. So let us know what you all think about Martin still being here. And what do you all think about the concept of high maintenance women? Um, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Has anyone ever called you a high maintenance woman? How did that make you feel? What do you think mm-hmm. about um, the way that people use that label? on women um yeah leave some thoughts down below so with that said let's talk about who went home and get into our bachelorette bracket breakdown um so the people who did go home this week chris s ended up getting sent home when he crashed nate's date she said that whole thing about trust which i think is actually a really good point so michelle sent chris home before the rose ceremony and then at the rose ceremony two more people went home it was leroy and to casey um i know leroy was so cute he did not get enough screen time i feel like he was so like he seemed to have such a good charming energy just like in the background there he was so cute with his glasses like i really wanted more (sighs) more leroy time but he's gone and so uh, getting into our brackets i can pull them up actually so getting into our brackets um julie i think your time to shine has passed okay (laughs) do you see the hope on my face for that quick second i was like am i doing better (laughs) i have been catastrophically failing (laughs) since i kept in party you you finally sent pardeep home which is good oh i did okay you finally sent him home the three you got three people wrong this week who you thought were gonna stay and that was jamie who i also got wrong and malik and pj Malik and PJ went home quite a while ago, I think, at this point. So it was, I guess you just like saw something in them. I saw something in them. Yeah, I believed (laughs) with all my heart. (laughs) What about yours? Yeah, with mine, the people who I left in, I just had one and that was Jamie. So Jamie is the only person that I got wrong who I thought was going to stay. So everyone else... I was pretty on point with. So I think that 
you know, I think I sent home Jamie. I still keep him for like another like week or two, I think. So Jamie will probably yeah. continue to mess up my bracket. But I think a lot of people thought Jamie was going to stay for a while. So, mm. you know, just like in the first episode, he just had such a good edit. She seemed to like him. She was like, he has such a nice smile. And like he was in the previews. So like, I think it He's was a charming. Very, I he tricked yeah. me too. Yeah. He tricked all of us. And then we heard him start talking and that's when we were like, "Oh." Yeah. You can't trust no. a pretty face. You have to get to Don't know tr- it. <laughs> get to know it. Get to know <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. So that's how our brackets are doing. I think it's, you know, I I think so the people that I kept in my top 4 are all still looking really good. It's Clayton, Rick, Joe, and Nate were in my top 4. I think you kept a pretty similar top four. I don't remember who I have. Hold on, I let me don't, tell you. I mean, okay, after the one-on-one date with Nate and Joe, especially Joe, okay, Joe's kind of winning me over. I know that I was kind of hating on him with the whole ghosting situation, but, like, for Michelle to say, this is the man I would have a crush on in high school if I saw him, that's almost game over. Like, yeah. that's just too big of a statement to say. Yeah. In your mind, you, my dad statement. and my brother, like... I know, I was surprised. Yeah, she said he's that. Kind Although of like she also had a lot of... For me. I think she also had a lot of really good chemistry with Nate, though. Like, she... I feel like she's she just, did. like, a little bit smitten over both of them, Joe and Nate. So mm-hmm. your top four was same as me, Clayton, Joe, and Nate. But instead of Rick, you have Brandon in your top four. So mm-hmm. that also seems like a fine... That seems like a fine potential top four person. I don't know. I think she seems into Brandon. I think she seems into Rick too, but I don't really believe the Rick thing very much. Like, she seems into him, but, you know, I think he's just, I don't know, just a little bit too, like, he has, like, this, like, sad boy energy to him. I know what you Greg. mean, Greg. Grippo. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of yeah. Greg Greg. Greg, 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 Greg Greg Grippo. <laughs> Dude, yes. He has, like, it's, like, his eye, like, his eyelashes. I don't yeah, know what. Yeah, it's just, like, and his eyes, yeah. always, like, he, they made a joke about how he always, like, makes really intense eye contact. Yeah, in, he does. In last night's episode, and I thought that was really funny, and it, it, it it's true. He's always, just like, really <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> I would hate that <laughs> if I was on a date with someone. <laughs> and he has eyes that were, like, it looks like that emoji. <laughs> The little watery eye emoji. I always oh use God, that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so freaking funny. He um, does look like that, and I, yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about like Clayton. I don't see that. We have not gotten all. any Clayton content. I mean, everyone. I think a lot of people are just assuming that he's gonna go far because of spoilers that have been out on. The internet so people are just assuming he goes far but that's we have really am. not seen she did give him a group date rose so that's the first time she's really kind of singled him out as being someone she kind of likes in particular but we i don't feel like we've really gotten a lot i don't know out of him. i don't i'm like he what seems like, is it i'm he looking seems like a nice guy <laughs> i don't think there's anything wrong with him i just yeah. i mean he's cute he's charming i think he's attractive but he's just like a little bit Clayton does seem nice. Like, he hasn't right. done anything. Like, he has not shown, like, a bad bone. So, in that sense, like, I do think I like him. But not enough to be, spoiler alert, please skip forward 30 seconds, not enough to be The Bachelor. Like, I just don't think he has anything. It's just not, nothing has been interesting enough to me that it seems like he deserves to be the lead of his own season. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's mm-hmm. I think that's the thing to me that I'm, like, kind of confused about. I go on a date with Clayton sure he seems fine but like I just yeah I wouldn't that's that's all (laughs) (laughs) that's my personal bias (laughs) and that's my personal bias I wouldn't (laughs) so So I'm like Clayton you better be interesting and he's not I'm just like (laughs) I just couldn't about when I found when I saw his jersey behind glass that's what oh, I was like yeah yeah no no Clayton well remember Michelle is a sports gal so she's probably like totally right. down for that that's probably <laughs> yeah. a-okay for her so totally <laughs> you're right so yeah I guess right now it's kind of like just that lull in the season when it's like connections are solidifying yeah. people are going home if they're not super strong 
Um, right, right. If they're vibes, which is cool, but... Yeah, I do yeah. think that this has been, like, a very normal season. Very like, normal. It has felt like a very normal, like, she's just dating guys and just deciding who she's connecting with. Like, it's felt quite low drama. Like, there's been, like, these little moments to, like, talk about, like, Martin's, like, weird misogyny thing or Jamie's red flags. Like, there's been these, like, little things that different contestants have done that have been, like, a little bit, like, ooh, like, that's a good, like, thing to talk about. But... Mm-hmm. Like, it feels like overall this season, like, it feels like a very, just like a kind of like a healthy dating process to me. I love the teachable moments that are coming out and just how Michelle's modeling a lot of really healthy, different, like, ways to date and ways to communicate and demand respect for yourself. That's pretty Mm. unique in this season, I think. Um, And I think it's also because of the fact that she's, like, black and she's very, like, aware of the things that are happening on a societal level. And she can communicate it. So that just makes her a great season. So I think that's all we have to talk about today. Thanks, y'all, for tuning in to another episode. We are recapping every episode of Michelle's season of The Bachelorette. So make sure you hit subscribe and give this video a like if you enjoyed our conversation. Leave a comment down below. Let us know who are the contestants who are sticking out to you. Let us know what you thought about Martin's high maintenance comments. And we will keep the conversation going down there. And that's all. We will see you next week.